Thank you. It's my pleasure to uh, discuss uh, China's debt issue here. Uh, you know, uh, just now, uh, Professor Victor uh, gave us a very uh, pessimistic picture about China's uh, debt. And for me, I think maybe it's not so bad, not so gloomy, uh, even though he's an expert, he's an expert on China's debt. I think the major uh, argument uh, here is that uh, when you talk about China's debt issue, you had has to use uh, I mean the right methodology. I mean, you should not just you know look at the debt side or liability side. You have to uh, look at the both side. For example, the debt side, liability side, and also the asset side. To put them together, we use uh, BSA balance sheet approach. So I think, firstly, I will say, even though China's debt to GDP ratio is very high, just now, uh, Victor told us uh, uh, from his estimation, maybe China's you know, debt to GDP ratio is very high. And uh, from our estimation, maybe a little lower, I think, you know, that's not the key point. Even though China's, you know, debt to GDP ratio is about, for example, sorry, for example, just from, you know, McKinsey, you know, estimate it's about 282. Yeah, 282 is uh, almost three times of GDP. Uh, and the real, for the real economy here, for the real economy here, it's about 217. It's very high. This is our estimation. It's a similar. I think that this, that's not the key point. Maybe you, you can still uh, say that China's debt to GDP ratio is 300% uh, uh, of GDP. That's the key, not key point. I think the key point here is when you take account of the asset side, asset side, especially in China, the sovereign asset is very high because China's government controls lots of you know, resources, lots of assets, the SOEs, the land, the infrastructures, and uh, you know, uh, some other uh, non-profit you know, institutions, their uh, fixed assets together, it's very, very high. So from our estimation, China's net sovereign equity or net sovereign assets in 2010 is about 70 trillion. Until today, it's about 100. Uh, yes, here. 100 trillion. 100 trillion. It's about 17. Uh, trillion US dollars. It's, it's very high. So another question may arise. Some will argue that China's data is not reliable. I can tell you one thing is that today there are three groups to estimate China's balance sheet. One group is, you know, our group, the uh, CAS group, Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Uh, the other two is, you know, the government, you know, uh, group. One is from, you know, MBS, National Bureau of Statistics. They have you know, lots of data and also PBOC, uh, People's Bank of China, they still you know, uh, do a lot of survey, I think. Put them together, I mean their data, the survey data and the statistical data together, they get, you know, get this, this number. Even though they never publish you know, such kind of you know, data. You know, uh, uh, so maybe you know, the uh, the outside world do not know that, but uh, we get the data. It's not so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, unreliable. We discuss with them and we get information that even the 100 trillion US dollars uh, net sovereign assets might be underestimated because some of the Government assets not included. For example, infrastructure is not included. 
why they 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 did that. They told us it's very interesting. They told us we should not, you know, have a very big, you know, very large net sovereign assets because if China's government assets net assets is very high, people will say, "Oh, China's government controls so much, you know, resources. It's not efficient," and uh, maybe will you know incur lots of criticism. That's very interesting. So, to some extent, they try to underestimate the assets. So, for me, I think the assets might be, you know, larger than this, larger than this. So, if China's government has so much, you know, resources to to deal with the debt issue, I think the problem is not the sovereignty problem. The problem is just the liquidity problem. Just now, Victor、uh, mentioned that. If China has so much cash flow, you know,、uh, for this, you know, interest servicing, I think that might be a kind of problem. But China's government now has taken lots of, you know, measures to deal with that. One is, for example,、uh, to issue the local government debt. Second is about, you know, the debt rollover.、Uh, the the third is the debt. They try to do that. The debt securitization. And the fourth is to use the policy bank to substitute the so-called local government financing platform. That means when the local government cannot borrow money from the banking system, then the policy bank now takes the role to support, you know, you know the, you know the investment, the local government investment. For example, the infrastructure investment, and also some other measures has been taken. For example. They try to shift the leverage within the sectors. For example, now you know the local government leverage is very high, but central government leverage is not so high. So they just you know shift the local government leverage to the central government leverage. Second is that they try to shift the leverage from SOEs to non-SOEs. Now China has tried to you know. Uh, push forward the form of so-called uh, uh, diversified ownership of SOEs. That means the SOEs can, in, you know, invite a lots of you know social capital, and I think that means you know the SOEs leverage will be shifted to the you know non-SOEs, and also China try to you know、uh, shift the leverage. Just from their banking system to the so-called, you know, the equity market. Equity market. What does that mean? You know, China's you know、uh, corporate sector leverage ratio is very high. That's a real problem in China. Real problem.、Uh, real problem in China. Not just you know local government debt ratio is very high. The corporate leverage ratio is very high. Now it's about one hundred and twenty. Uh, and 24, something like that, is much higher than the threshold, you know, leverage ratio in OECD、uh, countries. That's just about 90 percent. That's、uh, you know the the you know it's it's a very、uh, dangerous you know、uh, that that's a threshold much higher than that threshold. So if China's corporate leverage ratio is very high, so we can. You know, we try to deleverage it. The problem, you know, which cause so high leverage ratio just because of China's banking system, just because the corporate sector, when they try to find the investment, they just you know borrow the money from banking system. They can you know get little money from the equity market. But today, China want to develop. You know the equity market, the stock market now seems so robust, and maybe some people said there's a lot of bubbles there. But you know that's a long-term strategy for China. They try to develop the so-called direct finance and take it as a way to deleverage the corporate leverage ratio. So I think here there's lots of you know、uh, policies and reform has been. Uh, you know, uh, pushed forward to do that.
I think that might be some, you know, some good solution for this kind of, you know, debt issue. Uh, the third point for me here, I think I have to say, uh, people just, you know, talk about China's debt issue. I uh, use, you know, lots of, you know, data in the high, very high debt to GDP ratio, but they never did very much, you know, field study. Field study. So how about the local government debt issue there in China? Uh, we did a lot of, you know, case studies. Uh, last year, uh, we still tried to estimate Anhui province, maybe, you know, Anhui province, uh, balance sheet. When we talk with, you know, the you know, officials there, they, you know, told us or we were infer informed that their, you know, balance sheet is okay because they still have lots of, you know, government assets. They can sell some of them. Maybe someone said, oh, when you are in the uh, so-called uh, Minsky moment, you cannot just you know, sell your assets. But in China, I think now it's you know, a normal time. I think it's okay because China now just want to you know, implement the reform, reform, reform of mixed, mixed ownership of SOEs. So some local government just now doing you know, such kind of reform to sell part of the share of the SOEs to the social you know, uh, investment, then they can you know, get some cash flow. I think that's a way to deal with you know, the liquidity issues. And the local government still told us that they have some other uh, you know, uh, assets government assets and they are very confident to cover you know the debt issue the problem here is that even in uh, you know anhui hunan or some other you know uh, you know middle level provinces you know they have no problem about the debt but in some you know western i mean uh, uh, very underdeveloped provinces they might you know, incur lots of you know, debt risk. So the government, you know, the major you know, target for them is to deal with these provinces' you know, debt issues. So I think they may try to write down their you know, MPLs or their debt. So I think generally, generally China has so much financial assets, so the problem here is just a liquidity problem. It's not a sovereignty problem. And just you know, using such kind of policy and reforms, it'd be possible to resolve this debt issue. Um, finally, finally, sorry, I have to, yeah. Finally, I will say, as the economy enters into the so-called new normal, you know, this is a very, very uh, popular word in China now, the net wealth of government tends to shrink. Because if China just, you know, government controls so much, you know, resources, maybe it's less risky, but it's also, you know, very low efficiency. So China's government tried to reform such kind of development pattern and just with the reform of mixed ownership, the fiscal rev revenue goes down and their expenditure will be increased a lot. For example, with the aging population, China's you know, social security you know, liabilities will become very, very large, very large. And the last China's reform, you know, the sen central point of China's reform today is to let market play a very decisive role in the resource relocation. Just from this logic, I think China's government, you know, will control less resources in the future. That means China's net 
sovereign assets will shrink and maybe sometime become negative. Last, I, I will uh, maybe I can quote uh, some arguments from uh, Nicholas Lattis' uh, points. It's very interesting. Just recently, uh, he told you know, uh, you know China's media uh, that China's national saving now is fifty percent of GDP. China's you know uh, liquid assets in banking system is about eighty percent of GDP. China's uh, foreign currency denominated debt is just about 5% and China's you know, uh, household debt ratio is just about 38. So put them together, he said, you know, there's no chance for China to have a very serious debt crisis. So, so I think we'll have a bright future. Thank you. <laughs>